A blue state said yes to drugs, and it turned into a total disaster. Oregon, forced to do a total 180 after turning their state into one big skid row by decriminalizing hard drugs like heroin, cocaine, meth. The state now recriminalizing and slapping folks with potential jail time for possession. Only took three years of straight up chaos, crime, homelessness, ODs, all shooting through the roof. Jessica, Oregon, <laughs> as, as easy as this would be for me to take a big on Oregon, I won't because you have to respect the fact that they recognized the yeah. mistake and they changed it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'm so uh, reasonable today, aren't I? <laughs> Something yeah. weird is going on. But you did say there was a person who only drinks tea and wine. And water. <laughs> I water. actually admire that. I think yeah. that's a good He's policy. not real. I do. Jesse <laughs> came up with him in the makeup chair. Um, oh, then I'm just... Yeah, that's true. Um, no, Ted, Mayor Ted Wheeler has been through it, right? He, he started out on the absolute polar opposite side of it, talking about defunding the police. There can be homeless encampments anywhere you want, open drug use. And now he sounds, and it was making the round today on social media, uh, talk of Bill Clinton's 1996 election and how he triangulated these kinds of issues. And you look at someone even in the most liberal of cities like a Ted Wheeler, sound a lot without the super predator talk and all of that, but that you can find this middle ground between being wanting more cops on the street or being tough on crime and saying we can still have gun reform, for instance, that there are these salient liberal issues that can break through and be married up with being reasonable and that it's dangerous for your city and your communities. And this is what we're talking about with like the Oakland City Council meetings, for instance, or what happened in Chicago. The citizens of these cities are not saying to you, I, I, I woke up and I'm a Republican. They're saying, just give me common sense policy. And I think it's fantastic uh, that it's happening there, and hopefully it'll happen in more places. Dana, has the drug decriminalization experiment failed, <laughs> or are we still going to see more experimentation? Um, I would imagine experimentation. I mean, marijuana, we talked about abortion being on the ballot. There's like Most yeah. states have had legalization of marijuana. Look, it's going great here in New York City. It's absolutely appalling. But part of the reason is because the regulations that went along with it and the enforcement it hasn't that hasn't gone forward mm -hmm. and also in california for example it's more expensive to sell it legally than it is to sell it on the black market which is why they still have gangs selling it like a huge problem so i think if you want to legalize it there's got to, got to work out a lot of different kinks i but i you know i look at those videos and i think every single one of those people had a mom at one point who had hopes and dreams for their child and they're these unfortunately these people are living on the street but it also there's a other election component to this. Uh, sure. In Bloomberg today, there was a poll that said mm. on the issue of fentanyl that eight in 10 voters in swing states say that the issue of fentanyl is one of the main issues that will determine their vote, who they vote for in 2024. Eight in 10. And that caught my attention and Hemmer's attention. You s shall see more of it on America's Newsroom. Oh, the fentanyl voter. Greg, uh, I mean, to Dana's point, if, if, if I was like that, keeled over on the street, my mother would come find me and she would grab me by the hair mm -hmm. and she together. would just drag me back home get and throw together, me in the Jesse. shower and say, get it together. And then your hair would come off in her hand. Oh. <laughs> by the way, you know what's worse than drugs? Opening your segments with the black eyed peas. Haven't we had enough <laughs> suffering? Um, Wheeler is still a kook, kook, always was a kook. The drug thing was part of a mosaic of nuttiness. He was uh, shameful during the riots if we remember how he wouldn't do anything for yep. the police. And he was just pathetic. So I don't give him an out. I don't give him an out, Jessica. But this is a casualty of the prison of two ideas. It's either a war on drugs or a war on society. You either imprison people seeking something other than alcohol, or you let them turn your streets into a zombie apocalypse, which is what exa exactly what happened. We decriminalize drugs but we also decriminalized unlawful, uncivil behavior. You could have said, we're going to decriminalize, but you cannot do it in public. That's how we treated alcohol and illegal drugs. Cops, as far as I know, I don't want to get them into any trouble. They didn't care if you did drugs at home. Right. They just didn't want you on the streets. If you look at prostitution, it's not you don't see prostitutes in, in Times Square anymore. That's because it's all behind closed doors. Those Wall Streeters, they're still getting their hookers. So... It's, they decriminalized. 
with, uh, without a system in place to disincentivize what followed. So you had drug addicts clogging the streets, terrorizing families, destroying businesses, and then you add the influx of illegal fentanyl, which caused, what, 100,000 deaths a year. This is the problem with the left, is that they're left to their own devices. They establish no limits. They can't be trusted on these things. So you end up with a hellscape that could have been averted. You know, in America, you should be free to do what you want if you aren't hurting anyone else. The left stops in the middle of that sentence. You know, they don't fit. The, the left will say, in America, you should be free to do whatever you want. But then the Republicans come in and go, if you aren't hurting one, anyone else. Problem is, there's no Republicans to say that. Would that have worked, uh, judges, uh, Greg's idea, Judge, if you had decriminalized drugs and then you had enforced vagrancy laws or enforced public drug usage laws, would that have struck the balance? No. No? No. The question that you have to ask is, why did Wheeler and the progressives, after what happened in the 70s, the 80s, and the 90s, and the pendulum swung right, why did, as things started swinging toward the middle, why do these progressive know-nothings who know nothing about law enforcement, who haven't studied anything about crime, decide that they want to criminal, decriminalize drugs to create a new model drug policy for the country? It doesn't work that way. Drugs don't get here, and they're not just purchased by one person. They're brought in by mules. The way they do it is in gangs or cartels. They need weapons. They need, a, they need an area. They need a location that only they control. It involves violence. It involves uh, guns. It involves weapons. And it involves cr um, uh, uh, serious injury. I mean, it's not as simple as, you know, I'll take this and he'll take that. We'll be happy in our apartment. But it's not, it's not about that. It's about the fact that the progressives have tried to reinvent what didn't need reinventing. What made them think that if you decriminalize drugs and they're watching the numbers of homicides grow up, the homelessness grow, uh, 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 go up, they're also watching the drug overdoses, the exodus of business, there's no safety for families anymore. I mean, how long does it take them to figure this out? How many people had to die? How many people people had to lose their business? How many people had to be in a situation where they couldn't connect anymore with their family because they were disconnected because of whatever these nonsense progressives decide they think is the way to solve uh, crime and create a new model? It's real simple. You do something wrong, there has to be a penalty. When I was a judge, I was a narcotics judge for a year. If I saw someone who I thought as a career criminal, he was a second felony offender. That means he had to serve a mandatory minimum. I look at this guy, I don't want to give him a mandatory minimum. He only had a, maybe a nickel vial of something. I don't know. I don't want to give him a three and a half to seven. So I'll say to him, I'm going to put you in a program. And you better keep your ass in that program, because if you don't, I'm going to put you in jail for the maximum. But I had the ability and the incentive and the motivation to track him for that whole time. And I'm not talking about a three-month monitoring. I'm talking about a six-month to a year monitor. If you can get through with that, I'll let you go. But if you don't have the, 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 the cudgel of jail, then it's, it goes to hell in a handbasket. You are a great judge. <laughs> no, I was a great DA. Okay, fine. <laughs> Don't take my compliment. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.